وَأَقُولُ فِي الْقُرْآنِ مَا جَاءَتْ بِهِ آيَاتُهُ فَهُوَ الْكَرِيمُ الْمُنْزَلُ وَأَقُولُ قَالَ اللَّهُ جَلَّ جَلَالُهُ وَالْمُصْطَفَى الْهَادِي وَلَا أَتَأَوَّلُ الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد I want to say to you guys نصيحة إن شاء الله تعالى أنا أسك الله تميك مي from the first to benefit from it Uh, brothers, we are living in a time of fitan, trials and tribulations. Allah. We're living in times of fitan, times of trials and tribulations. And this time we're seeing Muslims who are weak in their iman, who are sick-hearted, and even the hypocrites. At this particular time, we see them falling. Allah wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ حَرْفٍ There are those people who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the edge, on the side. فَإِنْ أَصَابَهُ خَيْرٌ نِطْمَأَنَّ بِهِ If good comes his way, he's tranquil, he's happy, he doesn't question Allah, he says Islam is the religion for me. فَإِنْ أَصَابَهُ خَيْرٌ نِطْمَأَنَّ بِهِ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ فِتْنَةٌ نِنْقَلَبَ عَلَى وَجْهِ But when he's afflicted with fitna, trials and tribulations, na, what happens? In qalaba. He يعني, falls on his hill. Okay, uh, Allah then says, "Khasir dunya wal akhirah." He's lost in this world, and he's also lost in the the hereafter. In another verse, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He tells us in Surah Al Ankabut, "Wa min al nasi man yaqul amanna billah, fa idha udiya, fa idha udiya fi Allahi." There are from the people, those people who worship Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And if they are put through يعني, calamities and hardship, if they are thrown into it, فَإِذَا أُوذِيَ فِي اللَّهِ فِتْنَةً Trials, يعني, tribulations, they go through it. فَإِذَا أُوذِيَ فِي اللَّهِ جَعَلَ فِتْنَةً النَّاسِ كَعْذَابِ اللَّهِ They might make that trial and tribulation the cause of their deviation. So fitna is what I want to talk to you. And the Prophet Sallallahu told us, 1,400 and something years ago, that is going to come. He said, Inna bayna yaday sa'a. Before the hour, there is fitanan ka qita'i laylil mudlim. There's going to come trials and tribulations. This is what this trial and tribulation is going to be like. Yusbihu rajulu mu'minan wa yumsi kafiran. Wa yumsi mu'minan wa yusbihu kafira. Yabi'u deenahu bi'arad min ad-dunya. The believer will wake up in the morning and in the evening he's a believer. In the morning he wakes up, he's a believer, and in the evening he's a disbeliever. Or in the dis in the evening he's a believer, and in the morning he's a disbeliever. What has he done? He has sold his religion for a portion of this dunya. It's like the people. That's the people. They sell the, 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 the world. They sell what? They sell their religion for a portion of this world. Also, the Prophet told us there's going to come a time where the fitna is going to be so bad, so tough. The Prophet, he said, nafsi biyadi. I swear by the Lord, my soul is in his hand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La tadhabu dunya. This world will not go. Hatta yamar, hatta yamurra rajulu. Hatta yamurra rajulu. Until a man goes by ala qabrin. He goes by a grave. Fayatamarragu alayhi. And he yani scuffles over that grave. And then he says, Ya laytani kuntu makanahu. I wish I was in the place of this person in this grave. I wish. Yeah, and he is going to wish to leave this world. The fitness is going to become that much. Now, my brothers and sisters, what are the fitness that we're going to see? Is what I want to mention. What are the causes for it? And as I'm mentioning the causes, I'm going to mention the solution with it, inshallah. 
from the fitna that we are seeing is people expelling each other out of Islam. A person is expelling the people out of Islam and he's taking them out and saying, Fulan is not a Muslim, he's a kafir. Fulan is a fitna. The Prophet told us, alayhi salatu wasalam, ayyuma rajulin, amma ayyuma rajul, any man, qala li akhi, he says to his brother, ya kafir, he says to him, you're a kafir. Faqad ba'a biha ahaduhuma, this is going to come back to one of you. Either the, the person that you said kafir about is really a kafir, or it's going to come back to you. And on social media, you see that. Kafir, kafir, everybody, this person is calling him kafir. Oh, you think I'm a kafir? Guess what? You're a three-star kafir. Wahakada, they're throwing these labels at each other. Fitna. It's a fitna, wallah. Time of fitan. Number two, al qatlu, killing. You put on the news today and you look at it and you see the killing that the Muslims, this country Muslims are fighting each other, this country Muslims are fighting each other, Muslims are killing each other. It's from the signs of the hour. The Prophet, he said, Inna bayna yaday sa'a. Before the hour is al-harju. Al-harju is said to be an Abyssinian word. It's a lafzun habashi. The word al-harju, al-harju, is a lafzun habashi. And it means al-qatlu. It means al-qatlu. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Inna bayna yaday sa'a. Before the hour, there's al-harj. The Sahabas, of course, they said, Wa mal harju? What's harj, O Messenger of Allah? And he said, Al-Qatlu. And then the Prophet explained it. He said, Innahu laysa biqatilikumul mushrikina. It's not you killing the disbelievers. Walakin qatlu ba'dikum ba'da. You're going to kill one another. Muslims killing Muslims. Ay na'am. Hatta yaqtula until a person kills Jara, who his neighbor that he's known all his life, who grew up together. Neighbors and people will be killing each other that knew each other. A person will be going into the house of his neighbor and killing his neighbor. A person is going to kill his brother, his own brother. Why is he going to kill his brother? Because they share the same mom, but not the same dad. So, so, so they're from two different tribes. They kill each other. This one is in that camp of the tribe. Same mom, but not same dad. So the dads are two different tribes. We, this is, it happened in some countries, right? Two brothers, same mom, different dads, but they're killing each other. Why? Because this is from this tribe and that was from that tribe. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raju'un. Wa yaqtulu akhahu, he's killing his own brother. Wa yaqtulu ammahu, he's killing his own uncle. Wa yaqtulu ibn ammihi, and he's even killing his nephew. There's, the Prophet said this is going to happen. And this, my brothers and sisters, is wallahi exactly what you're saying. You go and put on the news, you watch this country, Look what's taking place right now as we speak in Sudan. Look at what's happening right now. A blessed land, honorable people. Sudani people are just the most relaxed, calm, respectful people you will meet. Look at what's happening in their country. Tamil. Are we all together, brothers? You put on the TV and you watch. Name a Muslim country. Illa wa fihi. There is يعني, a fitna or something going on. And little are saved from it. The third, my brothers and sisters, because you have to identify what is a fitna. The third type of fitna, my brothers, is inqilabul mawazin. The scales, the scale is upside down. Meaning, as the Prophet, he said, سَيَأْتِي عَلَى النَّاسِ سَنَوَاتٌ خَدَّعَاتٌ Years of deceptions are going to come. What's going to happen? يُصَدَّقُ فِيهَا الْكَاذِبُ وَيُكَذَّبُ فِيهَا الصَّادِقُ وَيُؤْتَمَنُ فِيهَا الخائن ويخون فيها الأمين وينطق فيه الرويبضة. The Prophet he said there's going to come years of deception. The years that are coming are years of deception. Those years of deception that's going to come, the liar will be trusted. A liar كذاب will be trusted, which is 99.9% of the politicians. Kadabun, liars, just so they can get election from the people, they lie. People trust them, vote for them, be with them. Online, people, one person makes up a st statement and everybody's retweeting it, everyone is sharing it. Kadib, it's easy to do. People believe in lies, easily. And guess what? 
the truthful person now will be disbelieved. He's telling the truth, no one believes him. وَيُؤْتَمَنُ فِيهَا الْخَائِنْ The deceptive individual, the treacherous person will be trusted. وَيُخَوَّنُ فِيهَا الأمين. And the person who is reliable now, he's treacherous. Everybody stay away from this person. He's a muslih. And look at this point. وَيَنْطِقُ فِيهِ الرَّوَيْبِضَةِ The Prophet, he said, the Rawaibidah are going to speak. The Sahabas, they said, Who are the Rawaibidah? Who are they? And the Prophet, he said, He's an insignificant person. No value, no qima. Insignificant. Doesn't know his right hand from his left hand. Doesn't know anything. And he's talking about big issues that if those issues were presented to Umar ibn al-Khattab, he would have called the people of Badr and said, what do you guys think regarding this issue? A man who is nothing on social media is debating. So, you know, when I realized that it's a joke what's happening on social media, when I realized that a brother was having a back and forth with another brother online, and little did he know that the brother he's talking to is a 12-year-old. Do you understand now? It made me think, subhanAllah, who are you talking to on the other side? Are we all together, brothers? Who is it really that you're talking to? You don't know. So, yani, it's become a source of what's on there, what's the information on there, it's taken as we've been we've been being fooled a lot. The fourth, inshallah ta'ala, fitna that we are seeing in this time is fitna to du'at al-dalala. The fitna of misguided callers who call people to misguidance. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I mean, this is a hadith of Hudayfa ibn al Yaman. The Prophet told Hudayfa, because Hudayfa said, كان الناس يسألون رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن الشر عن الخير عن الخير وكنت أسأله عن الشر مخافة أن يدركني. The people used to ask the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم about the خير and the good. I, on the other hand, Hudayfa, I would ask the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم about the evil so that I can avoid and stay uh, from it. So he said. فَقُلْتُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ I said, O Messenger of Allah, إِنَّا كُنَّا فِي جَاهِلِيَّةٍ وَشَرٍ As you know, O Messenger of Allah, we were upon misguidance, and we were upon ignorance and corruption. فَجَاءَنَا اللَّهُ بِهَذَا الْخَيْرِ And this good that you've brought to us has come to our way. Allah has brought this to us, subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَهَلْ بَعْدَ هَذَا الْخَيْرِ مِنْ شَرٍ Is there going to be evil after this khayr that we're in right now? The Prophet, he said, Naam, there is. Hudayfa then said, وَهَلْ بَعْدَ هَذَا الشَّرِّ مِنْ خَيْرِ That evil that's going to come, is there going to be khayr after it? Look what then the Prophet said, Naam وَفِيهِ دَخَن Naam وَفِيهِ دَخَن Yes, that there is going to be a khayr after that evil, وَفِيهِ دَخَن Dakhan means there's going to be smoke. The khair here is not going to be clear khair. It's going to be a tainted, dark, cloudy khair. Hudayfa said, وَمَا دَخَنُهُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Oh, Messenger of Allah, what's this smoke? What's this unclear? What does it mean? He said, قَوْمٌ يَهْدُونَ بِغَيْرِ هَدِي وَيَسْتَنُّونَ بِغَيْرِ السُنَّةِ They're going to come a people who will take guidance other than my guidance. And they're going to tread a path other than my path. تَعْرِفُ مِنْهُمْ وَتُنْكِرُ You affirm some of their things and good and some of the things that you're going to reject. He then said, okay, after that khayr that you just mentioned, is there going to be evil then? وَهَلْ بَعْدَ هَذَا الْخَيْرِ مِنْ شَرْ that khayr that you just mentioned, which is dark and it's not clear, is there going to be shar after that? 
He said, Naam. Du'atun ala abwabi jahannam. Man ajabahum qadhafuhu fiha. The Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there's going to be callers. This is what I want. Du'at. Callers. Ala abwabi jahannam. They're standing at the doors of jahannam. They're not callers to jannah. They are callers to Jahannam. Du'atun ala abwabi Jahannam. Man ajabahum, anyone who obeys them and listens to them, they will throw you into that hellfire. They will be the means for you to enter the hellfire. Hudayfa then said, Sifhum lana ya Rasulallah. O Messenger of Allah, describe these people for us. Who are these people? The Prophet, he said, Hum min jildatina wa yatakallamuna bi alsinatina. They are from our skin. And they will be speaking our language. So I mean, it's not a people from another aliens. Or, no, no, no. It's like us. They'll speak Arabic. They'll read hadiths. Some of the scholars, they said that they will be Arabs. And of course, they can be anything other than the Arabs. Hudayfa then said, فَمَا تَأْمُرُنِي إِنْ أَدَرَكْتُ ذَلِكَ If that time I reach it, what do you command me to do? What shall I do in that situation? When that happens, what do I do? The Prophet, he said, Talzamu jama'at al-Muslimina. You stick with the Muslims, the unity of the Muslim and the, the leader of the Muslims. That's what you stick with. Hudayfa is asking questions. He's not just going to, he wants to know every circumstance, any scenario. He said, which is what applies to you guys. فَإِن لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُمْ جَمَاعًا What about if they don't have a jama'ah? They live in the lands of the non-Muslims. There's no Muslim leader for them. What do they do in that particular situation? فَإِن لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُمْ جَمَاعًا وَلَا إِمَامٍ They have no jama'ah. They have no Muslim ruler. None of that. What do they do? The Prophet said, فَاعْتَزِلْ تِلْكَ الْفِرَقَ كُلَّهَا Stay away from all of the groups. فَاعْتَزِلْ تِلْكَ الْفِرَقَ كُلَّهَا Stay away from all of the groups. Don't يعني, abide to this, this jama'ah or this jama'ah and the, or this jama'ah. فَاعْتَزِلْ اِعْتِزَالْ Abandon, leave all of the groups. وَلَوْ أَنْ تَعَضَّ بِأَصْلِ الشَّجَرَةِ حَتَّى يُدْرِكَكَ الْمَوْتُ وَأَنْتَ عَلَى ذَلِكَ The Prophet said. Even if you, hold, even if you have to hold on to the bottom of the tree and bite on that and hold on to that until death comes to you and you're in that situation. You're alone. Then do that. فَعَتَزِلْ تِلْكَ الْفِرَقَ كُلَّهَا Stay away from all of these groups. Groupism. Do you have to be part of a group? That you cannot be upon the truth and you can't follow the haqq and the khair. That's what the Prophet said. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that, my brothers and sisters, is what? is some of the fitan. Also from the fitan, my brothers and sisters, is fitnatul mal. Fitnatul mal, money. Fitnatul mal is the fitna that we're all seeing. Everybody online is showing their gl glamorous, glitterous, يعني, shocking lifestyle. I have gone to Dubai. I am in a seven star, five star, six star hotel. I'm driving uh, this car and this car, a private jet. Mal. Allah told us, Inna amwalukum wa awladukum fitna. Wallahu indahu ajrun azim. Verily, your wealth and your children are a fitan, the trials and tribulation. Wallahu indahu ajrun azim. And great reward is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet he said in the hadith, إِنَّ لِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ فِتْنَةٍ وَفِتْنَةُ أُمَّةِ المال. Every nation has fitna. And the fitna of my ummah is money. There you go. Money is the fitna of this ummah. Surah At-Tawbah, Allah mentions the story of a man some scholars, they say that they know who the man was and they mention a specific story. And some scholars, they say, which is the strongest opinion, 
that this is not a particular individual, but it's the concept of some people. It's more of a general issue. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ عَاهَدَ اللَّهَ لَإِنْ آتَانَا مِنْ فَضْلِهِ لَنَصَّدَّقَنَّ Allah is telling us the story of وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ عَاهَدَ اللَّهَ A person who's made a covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did he say? Oh Allah, if you give me money, if you give me wealth, what am I going to do? لَنَصَّدَّقَنَّ I promise you, oh Allah, I'm going to give this money in sadaqah. I'm going to worship you with this money. وَلَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And I'm also going to be from the righteous people. فَلَمَّا Allah says, as soon as he was what? فَلَمَّا As soon as he what? آتَاهُمْ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ بَخِلُوا بِهِ وَتَوَلَّوْا وَهُمْ مُعْرِضُونَ When Allah gave him the wealth, when Allah gave him the money, what did he do? فَلَمَّا آتَاهُمْ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ As soon as he received the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he turned away and he abandoned the promise that he made. And that's what happens in, with wealth. It's little, those who are grateful and obey Allah with the money that they receive. And don't forget the story of Qarun. Inna Qarun kana min qawmi Musa fabagha alayhi wa atainahu min al-kunuz ma inna mafatihahu latanu'u bil-usbati ulil quwa. Qarun had wealth, a lot of wealth. And the wealth that Qarun had reached the level of this. His treasures, the place where the money was stored, okay, don't even ask about how big that was. The key to those storages, uh, men of great strength had to pick it up. The keys to it. إِنَّ مَفَاتِحَهُ لَتَنُؤُ بِالْعُصْبَةِ أُولِ الْقُوَّةِ Men who are very strong had to put it on their shoulders and carry that, that the, the key. So if the key is that big, what do you think the storages are going to be? Or the kunuz in which it is? Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, look what he said. إِنَّ قَارُونَ كَانَ مِنْ قَوْمِ مُوسَى فَبَغَى عَلَيْهُمْ وَأَتَيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْكُنُوزِ مَا إِنَّ مَفَاتِحَهُ لَتَنُوءُ بِالْعُصْبَةِ أُولِ الْقُوَّةِ Look after that. Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِذْ قَالَ when he said, لَهُ قَوْمُهُ لَا تَفْرَحْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْفَرِيحِينَ وَابْتَغِ فِي مَا آتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ وَلَا تَبْغِ الْفَسَادَ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِنَّهُ لَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُفْسِدِينَ And then Allah says قَالَ إِنَّمَا أُتِيتُ عَلَى عِلْمٍ عِنْدِي Now I want the story. The people broke into two parties when it came to Qarun. The first group of people فَخَرَجَ عَلَى قُومِهِ فِي زِينَتِي He came out on a, the day of beauty and he beautified himself. فَخَرَجَ عَلَى قُومِهِ فِي زِينَتِي Look what the people said. قَالَ الَّذِينَ يُرِيدُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا يَا لَيْتَ لَنَا مِثْلَ مَا أُوْتِيَ قَارُونَ إِنَّهُ لَذُو حَظٍ عَظِيمٍ When they saw what Qarun had, that's what happens to people. When they see things online, social media and this stuff, what do they see? Oh, that's what I want to be. And they forget, forget about طَلَبُ الْعِلْمِ they, forget, they leave off seeking knowledge. They said, قَالَ الَّذِينَ يُرِيدُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا يَا لَيْتَ لَنَا مِثْلَ مَا أُوْتِيَ قَارُونَ Oh Allah, why can't we just have? If only we got what Qarun has given. إِنَّهُ لَذُوْ حَظٍ عَظِيمٍ He has received a good portion. Look at the life he's living. That's the life I want. There you go. This is all I want. But look at the people. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ وَيْلَكُمْ ثَوَابُ اللَّهِ خَيْرٍ The people of knowledge spoke. They said, Allah's reward is better. Don't be fooled by this glamour. and gl Oh, you're a hater, man. You're just hating it. You can't, you can't just watch his brother make it, right? فَخَسَفْنَا بِهِ وَبِدَارِهِ الْأَرْضِ We destroyed him. The earth swallowed Qarun and his wealth was destroyed. What were the people now? قَالَ الَّذِينَ تَمَنَّوا مَكَانَهُ بِالْأَمْسِ The people that were wishing for what was given to Qarun. وَيْحَكْ they, They're shocked now. Ah, They're not wishing for what Qarun received. Now what they're saying? They affirm Allah's ability and strength and they say to the people of knowledge, you guys were right. Wealth is a fitna, my brothers and sisters. Wealth is what? It's a fitna. And always remember that if you're given wealth, are you going to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in it? Maybe it's good not to have it. 
The Prophet mentioned the story of three men. Three men. One was bold, one was blind, and one had leprosy. And I'm sure you all know the story. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to test them, all three of them. So he sent an angel. As the narrations show, Jibreel was the angel that was sent to them. So he came to the one who had leprosy. He said to him, he said to him, the angel said, said to this man, Ayu shay'in ahabbu ilayka? What is most beloved to you? What do you love the most? He's got leprosy. So he said, Lawnun hasan. I wish I can have good skin. Wa And I also would like to, for, 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 for it to, Wa jildun hasan. I want my skin to be look nice. I want to have good skin. And I want whatever the people are shaming me for to go. That's what I want. Famasahahu, the angel wiped him. Fadahaba Qadaruhu, the skin, what was on it, Alhamdulillah, it went. Allah gave him subhanahu wa ta'ala good skin. Then he was asked, Fa'ayyul mali ahabu ilayka, what is the wealth that was most beloved to you? What would you want the most? He said, Al ibilu, camels. Or he said, cows. The narrator doubted it. Then the angel came to the second one. The one who was what? Bold, who lost his hair. He said, what is it that you want? The akara. He said, I want hair. I've lost my hair. I want to get my hair back. So what did the angel do? He wiped uh, him and he got his hair back. So فَمَسَحَهُ He wiped his head. And Allah gave him back hair. And then he asked him, in terms of wealth, what do you want? And then he said, I would like to have cow. And he was given cows. Pregnant cow, female cows. Just like the previous one was given camels. Female camels. The female camel is better than the male camel, right? She can have children, it carries on. Then he came to the third and he was blind and he said, what do you want? What's the most beloved thing to you? He said, I'm blind. I want my eyesight back. And I also want uh, for this, yeah, this suffering that I've been going through to go, meaning that blindness. So the angel wiped uh, him. His eyesight came back. And he said, in terms of wealth, what is most beloved to you? And he said, al ghanamu goats. And he was given a valley of goats. So all of them have valleys of يعني, and a lot of wealth. The angel a while came back and he came and visited the first man who had leprosy. Beautiful, amazing the way he looks. The angel came in a form of a, a poor man and he said to him, I am يعني, poor, I'm a traveler. I've lost my way and I'm in need of what? Some help. And I can't reach my destination unless I am given something. So is it possible that you can give me a uh, uh, camel? I ask you by the Lord who يعني, fixed your skin and give, gave you this wealth. So, fulfill some rights towards what Allah gave you and give me a camel so I can reach my destination. Look what he said. He said, this wealth that you're talking about? This wealth that you see I have? I took it from my dad and my dad took it from his dad. and he's, this, this has been in the family for a long time. You think I'm, I just made it yesterday? The angels then said to him, فَإِن كُنْتَ كَاذِبًا If you're lying and this is not the case, فَسَيَّرَكَ اللَّهُ إِلَى مَا كُنْتَ May Allah take you back to what you used to be. And that's what happened. He went back to having leprosy and he lost everything. And the same happened to the man who had, who was bold. When he was asked, the angel said the same thing to him. And he said to him, 
إنما ورثت هذا كابرا عن كابر I've inherited generation of generation This is where I got it from And he said if you're lying May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what? Take you back to how you used to be But when he came to the blind man And he told him The blind man said to him خذ ما شئ to take whatever you want ودع ما شئ to leave off whatever you want فوالله by Allah لا أجهدك أجهدك اليوم شيئا أخذته Take whatever you want and leave whatever you want I will in no way shape or form Fight with you for anything that you take And then he said to him I used to be Once upon a time I was blind I had nothing And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Gave me back my eyesight And he gave me this wealth So You're more than happy to take what you want The angel then said to him Amsik alayka Keep your wealth فَإِنَّمَا ibtulitum. I tested you and the another two men فَقَدْ رُضِيَ عَنْكَ فَقَدْ رُضِيَ عَنْكَ وَسُخِطَ عَلَى صَاحِبَيْكَ Allah is pleased with you and as for them Allah is angry with them Subhanahu wa ta'ala Bukhari and Muslim both narrated that in their sahih Also my brothers and sisters from the things that are fitna is women Women are fitna fitna to nisa The Prophet he said ma taraktu ba'di fitna there is no fitna I left behind adarra 'ala ar-rijal min an-nisa a fitna greater for the men than women The Prophet even said in a hadith in the dunya hulwatun khadira wa inna Allah mustakhlifakum fayanzura kayfa ta'malun ittaqu ad-dunya wattaqu an-nisa fa inna awwala fitnati bani Isra'il kanat fi an-nisa aw kama qala alayhi salatu wassalam The Prophet he said this dunya is green okay and Allah has made you governors over this earth he's going to look at what you do as he makes you governors on this earth fattaqu ad-dunya wattaqu an-nisa fear Allah when it comes to the dunya and fear Allah when it comes to women fa inna awwala fitna because the first fitna of Bani Israila was women women's fitna is very serious zuyyana lin nasi hubbu ash-shahawati min an-nisa that was the first that was mentioned زُيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ حُبُّ الشَّهَوَاتِ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ وَالْبَنِينَ وَالْقَنَاطِيرِ الْمُقَنْطَرَةِ مِنَ الذَّهَبِ وَالْفِضَّةِ وَالْخَيْلِ الْمُسَوَّمَةِ وَالْأَنْعَامِ وَالْحَرْثِ ذَلِكَ مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَاللَّهُ عِنْدَهُ حُسْنُ الْمَآبِ First thing was mentioned was what women? Why? Because the fitna of women, my brothers and sisters, it's serious for men. And a woman, subhanallah, is awrah. She's awrah in all aspects. She's an awrah. فَإِذَا خَرَجَتْ If the woman leaves the house, إِسْتَشْرَفَهَا الشَّيْطَانُ Shaytan beautifies her. Makes her look beautiful. أي نعم إِسْتَشْرَفَ أي زَيَّنَهَا فِي أَعْيُنِ الرِّجَالِ This woman will look ten times more beautiful because of what shaytan is trying to bring to you. Fitna. He wants to cause fitna to you. And subhanallah, my brothers and sisters, if you look at Kutub أهل العلم, you will see the fitna of women what it's done to people and Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim rahimahullah he mentions the story of a man in his kitab Rawdatul Muhibbin wa Nuzhatul Mushtaqeen he talks about obsession and love in that book he mentions rahimahullah that a man climbed a uh, he's a mu'adhin so he used to climb the, pulp, uh, the, the minaret the minaret okay and he would do the adhan and one day he climbed up to do the adhan. فَنَظَرَ فِي بَيْتِ جَارِ الْمَسْجِدِ He looked at the neighbor of the masjid. The house of the neighbors of the masjid. And the house was the, a house by a Christian family. So he's on the minaret, he's doing adhan. He's gonna just, he does adhan. He saw the daughter of the man's, his daughter. When he saw her, 
Beauty is what he saw. Uh, shocked. Jaw dropped. How beauty this girl was. فَافْتَتَنَ بِهَا And then he was, يعني فتنة happened to him. وَتَعَلَّقَ بِهَا And he became very obsessed over her. He came down and he knocked the door and he said, I want to marry your daughter. Or he went to the girl and he said, I want to marry you. She said, look, أنت مسلم وأنا نصراني. I'm a Muslim and you're a Christian. How is that going to work? I'm a Muslim, sorry. You're, she said to him, you're a Muslim. She said to him, you're a Muslim, sah. And I'm a Christian. How is that going to work? You're, you're a Muslim and I'm a Christian. How is it going to work? How are we going to get married, both of us? He said, what do you want from me then? What's the request? She said, Tanasar. The only way it's going to work is you leave your, your religion and become a Christian. فَتَنَصَّرَ وَارْتَدَّ عَنْ دِينِهِ He apostate. The man actually left his religion. And he became a Christian. And he got with the woman. And some of the scholars mentioned, like Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim, he said, he left Islam and he was on his way to get married to her. On the way to get married to her, he basically died on the way. خَسِرَ الدُّنْيَا akhirah. He lost his dunya and he also lost the akhirah. Are we all together? Another story. A man took his wife, young boy. When I say boy, he's a young man, just got married. But his wife was... Yani not dressed properly and she wasn't and he dressed accordingly. Her beauty, everything was out public. And she was with who? With her husband. So they jumped into a taxi together, the both of them. The taxi driver can see the beauty of this woman. So what does he do? He pulls over his car. And he asks the man to help him with the car. He comes out of the car, the man, to help the driver with the tire. He says, come help me with the tire of my car. And when he does, the woman's in the car. Of course, she's not going to come out to do the tire. He goes back into the car, the driver, and drives off. And he took his wife. Are we all together, brothers? Now he doesn't know what to do. Are we all together, brothers? This, my brothers and sisters, where did it come from? Women are a fitna. What is it? A fitna. And I'm sure you guys know much more stories. Are we all together, brothers? So, my brothers and sisters, Remember, مَا تَرَكْتُ بَعْدِي fitna. I have not left a fitna after me, the Prophet said. أَضَرَّ عَلَى الرِّجَالِ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ A fitna greater for the men than women. صح? فَاتَّقُوا الدُّنْيَا وَاتَّقُوا النِّسَاءِ And a lot of women know that. They take advantage of that. Especially women who are non-Muslims. Who have nothing to... يعني, they have no morals and they take advantage. Are we all together, brothers? I remember there was a case in the UK where a brother had zina with a woman and she, and I'm only telling you this because the ajib, ajaib. So when they had zina, she said, this is a case that I brought to the masjid. She said, have zina with me in a rough way. Then he did. When he did, she, she recorded it. And she said, I'm going to use this as rape. The brother had wealth. She said, unless you give me half a million or nine years in prison. That's all I'm going to say. I've got the recording. You need to bring the money here. Are we all together? So even my brothers and sisters, if the case doesn't, he doesn't, he wins in court, it wasn't, and, and he proves that she's bribing him and she's lying and all of that. But guess what? His name's always destroyed. 
So why get yourself in that position in the first place? But we're all together, brothers. A brother used to work in an office, and in that office there were a lot of women. And when the Me Too movement started, and women were saying, Me Too, Me Too, Me Too, Me Too, Me Too, the brother who Allah saved was the one who never touched women. The other ones who hugged, yani, things they thought was liberal, it's not being extreme, come on, calm down, why are you so extreme? They started to wish for what? That man who didn't touch the woman. Because every woman was saying, you touched me in the wrong way. I felt very uncomfortable that day when you hugged me. You looked at me in this way. Are we all together, brothers? So my brothers and sisters, and it's sad to see brothers who have social media outlets and they're following what? Women. He's following a woman on social media. He's watching their, her stuff and all of that. Wallahi, this will flip your iman. Also, fitnatul kufari li ahli islam which is the point I want to bring to your attention. The fitna of the disbelievers towards the believers. You guys are... Uh, uh, all of you guys are living in the lands of the non-Muslims. So is there anyone who here is from within you? Who's so there's no one. All of you guys are living in the lands of the non-Muslims. And this is a fitna. Living in the lands of the non-Muslims is a fitna. The reason is because you, every day you are going through indirectly, directly, yani, a, attack on your deen. True or false? Wallah. Your Islam is being attacked on news, online, at school, think directly, indirectly. Are we all together, brothers? And this is a fitna. Fitna so much so that it can make a person leave the fault of Islam. And people have. What did they say? That yani, always us. They draw Islam in the most barbaric, backwards myth, yani, lifestyle. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ فَتَنُوا الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ Those who tested the believers' iman, أصحاب الأخدود, Allah says, ثُمَّ لَمْ يَتُوبُوا فَلَهُمْ عَذَابُ جَهَنَّمَ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابُ الْحَرِيقِ Fitna to the Muslims' iman. So my brothers and sisters, living in the lands of the non-Muslims is a fitna as long as you're there. And how long can you endure that fitna? Only Allah knows. صح? And that's why I said at the beginning, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى حَرْفِ فَإِنْ أَصَابَهُ خَيْرُ نِطْمَأَنَّ بِهِ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ فِتْنَةِ إِنْ قَلَبَ عَلَى وَجْهِ خَسِرَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْخُسْرَانُ الْمُبِينَ That's why there is a lot of Muslims leaving Islam, صح? In these countries. Even though a lot of people are coming into Islam, there are also a lot of other people who are leaving Islam. Are we all together, brothers? It's because these lands, there are fitan. I'm going to quickly go over things that you need to be careful of which cause fitna. We spoke about the types of fitna, but what are the things that make fitna happen? The first one is following desires. People fall into fitna because they follow their desires and they have very bad intention. يعني they have مقصد سيء أفرأيت من اتخذ إلهه هوا وأضله الله على علم وختم على سبعه وقلبه وجعل على بصره غشاوة فمن يهديه من بعد الله أفلا تذكرون so he followed his lord is what what's his lord Allah, his desires أفرأيت من اتخذ إلهه هوا his desires is his Lord. And that's what he worships. He worships his desires. That's the first one. Number two. The second thing that causes people to fall into fitan is when you're an extremist. What is an extremist? You're extreme in exaggerating and, or you're extreme in negligence. And shaitan sniffs you. He sniffs the person's heart. And when he sniffs your heart, he will see what type of person you are. Are you the type that likes to always go overboard in things? He will make you go overboard in what you do. 
If he sm sniffs from you that you are a negligent person, you always take the easiest way, you're relaxing, always chillaxing. What will he do to you? He will. He will take you to be what? Extreme negligence. Ifrat or tafrilt. And those are the two you need to be careful of when it comes to when it comes to fitna. Don't overdo things to yourself. In the yusrun, walan yushad the deen ahadun illa ghalabahu. Fasadi du waqaribu. This religion is easy, it's simple, don't overdo it. Young brothers start practicing the deed. They see a hadith and nusuls and straight away, without knowing the way it's applied, the way it's done, in what place it's done, how it's done, and they don't understand all of that. So they take these nusuls and they apply it, and especially sometimes they go and they apply it on their families. Huh? And then it causes a lot of problems. Extreme exaggeration. And then later, sometimes if your family are not even Muslims, it becomes very hard to give them da'wah because you, you burn all the bridges. Because you went extreme exaggeration. You didn't look at the, the method and the hikmah of how da'wah is given. Now we'll together, brothers. Don't be extreme in exaggeration. And don't, don't equate to being very, taking all the harshest views. Don't think that's piety. That's not piety. It was mentioned about our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The Prophet was never given the choice between two things إلا أخذ أيسرهما He takes the easiest one ما لم يكن إثما As long as it's not a sin He took the easiest one You're a traveler For example, in a country Allah is giving the ruqsa of shortening and combining For example, take that I'm like, no, I'm righteous I'm going to pray every... And it's a ruqs that Allah gave you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are we all together, brothers? Yani, the Prophet told us, alayhi salatu wa inna allaha yuhibbu an yu'ta bil ruqasi kama yuhibbu an yu'ta bil azaimi. Allah loves for you to come with the ease, the way he loves for you to come with the, 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 the strong rulings that he has given you. Like pray this salah, this time and this salah. And when he gives you ease, Allah likes you to come with the ease. Because he's the one who legislated both. And you're obeying him in both situations. صح? So stay away from being extreme. There's some people, my brothers and sisters, they have, and extremism is by the way is two. There's extreme in belief and there's extreme in what actions. صح? Extreme in belief is that you're the only guided person and everyone else is misguided and you are يعني, فِرْقَةٌ نَاجِي and طَائِفَةٌ مُنْسُورَ You and a few of your friends. That's, and you believe that. Or you believe you're the only Muslim and everyone is kuffar and and Allah only gave you Islam. That's ghulu i'tiqadi. And there's another type of ghulu which is ghulu amali. Ghulu amali is when the person is extreme in acts of worship. He does overly does righteous deeds. To the extent that those righteous deeds that he's doing, he's abandoning more important responsibilities. Are we all together? He's forsaken his wife. He's forsaken his children. He's forsaken the responsibility that are upon him. Mas'uliyat that are upon you. You need to fulfill this responsibility. Tudayi'uhu. You forsake those responsa, responsibilities. Sah, brothers? Or your, your responsibility of your parents. Or responsibility of your family. You're leaving all of that. And you're saying what? I pray Qiyam Lain. I fast Mondays and Thursdays. I, fasting Mondays and Thursdays, what's more important is you have good akhlaq. إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِأُتَمِّمَّ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ So knowing the awlawiyat, what comes first, and then what's next, and then what's next, and what's next, and having that sequence and the order is important. And you know why brothers, people fall into al-ghuluf fi rifrati wa tafriq why do they fall extreme in exaggeration and extreme negligence? Because number one, Adam Fahmi Deen. There's not a good understanding of the religion. Mm -mm. They don't have understanding. They don't understand the Quran and the Sunnah properly. Are we all together, brothers? That's one of the reasons why. If you truly understood, one of the things you will learn is what is known as Al-Awlawiyat. Awlawiyat. Awlawiyat are what? The sequence and the order of things. Sah? The sequence and the what? 
the older thing. Basic talib ilm will know that the good deed that's restricted to you and the deed that encompasses others, which one is better? The others. There's ibadat which are called qasira, ibadat which are restricted to you, and ibadat which are muta'addiya, meaning it involves other people. Which one is better? The actions which are muta'addiya. It's better than the amal which is qasira. So saying I pray qiyamul layl, and then saying um, I was praying qiyamul layl and some family members knocked on the door, but I carried on my salah. Are you all together? This is and not having understanding of what? Which one is more greater? Which one is better? That you stop the Qiyamul Layl for that night and say, listen, I have family guests that came, I'm not going to pray tonight. And you let them in and you give them the time and you make them feel special and you let them go. Which one's better? Are we all together? I remember a brother, tough brother, just practicing the deen, reads an ayah from the Quran directly, acts upon it. So he got married. His wife complained. She said, this guy, I don't know where he came from, what galaxy he was sent from. I can't do this. I can't live this way, she said. I'm losing it. I said, what happened, sister? Calm down. I thought she was one of those feminists. Huh? Who, she doesn't like the ayat and the hadith, but I learned a lesson not to judge. At the end of that, huh? At the end of that discussion, I was on the woman's side. She said, my parents came and knocked on the door. And the time that they knocked on my door, was it after Salatul Isha or was it يعني, uh, Dhuhr time? One of the times, my parents came. And then my husband looked and he said, don't let them in. I said, why? She, he said to me, Allah said in the Quran. She said, what? We, she, she said, what did Allah say? She said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, min qabli salatil fajr wa hina tada'una thiyabakum. ومن بعد صلاة العشاء ثلاث عورات لكم. There's three times that you don't come to people's houses. ها. من قبل صلاة الفجر before فجر. ظهر time and after عشاء. Those it, which is true. I does say that. She said, my mom, it's raining outside. She's at the door. He said, are we going to take Allah over your mom? Do you see, brothers, happening here? Huh? She was like, I literally watched my mom stand there. And then he said to me, go to her and tell her, Is your, open the door, tell her. She goes, I can't tell my mom. I prefer she thinks that we're not here. I said, no, I command you. Again, he used the hadith. You have to obey your, you have to obey your husband. So you have to go to the door and tell your mom, by your husband. Hey, what do I do? Go to your mom and tell her, mom, my husband said you can't come this time. It's not the right time to come. She said, I was in tears. I opened the door. I said, mom, you, it's a bad time. You can't come. So Allah saved me that my mother understood. But what type of person am I dealing with? is what you're dealing with, sister. But I said in my head, I don't want to destroy this marriage. But I was like, A'udhu Billah. Sah brothers, that person is going to make that sister hate Islam, the name Islam, the word Islam. She's going to hate every ishtiqaqat of that word. And he's thinking that, قُلْ هَلْ نُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِالْأَخْسَرِينَ أَعْمَالًا he thinks he's doing good. So where did, this is ghulu. It's not pleasing to Allah. Angers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where did it come from? Adam fahmil Quran. He didn't understand the verse he's reading. He hasn't comprehended that. I will tell the brothers. And these type of people were kathirun mahu. They're many. And they burn out. But the problem is if they only burnt out themselves, they take other people with them as well. And they destroy the, the image of Al-Islam. So don't, dis, don't attribute to yourself or don't think to yourself that if a person is harsh and tough and rough, he's mashallah, sahibu haqq wa khayr, min ahli taqwa, baqiyya to salaf. Are we all together? 
The Prophet told us in a hadith, you know what he said? He said that the believer is what? A person who is what? Sahlun layinun. See that? Did you see that, brothers? What did the Prophet say about the believer? He said that the true believer is the person who is soft and approachable. What is he? He's soft and what? Approachable. It ha happened at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu The Prophet Sallallahu the women, they came to the Prophet and they were talking and they were talking in the presence of who? The Prophet Sallallahu Who entered? Umar entered. What happened to the women? Yeah, they all ran away. What was their reason when they met? When they, what was their reason why they ran away? Yeah, Umar scares us, he said. Like an Umar was not what these people are. Are we all together, brothers? Umar is no way like these people. But the point I'm trying to show you from the story is that the Prophet وسلم, was what? Hatta when the ayah came down, وَإِذَا سَأَلْتُمُهُنَّ مَتَاعًا فَسَأَلُهُنَّ مِنْ وَرَاءِ حِجَابٍ ذَلِكُمْ أَطْهَرُ لِقُلُوبِكُمْ وَقُلُوبِهِنَّ What's the beginning of that verse? يَا يَلَذِينَ عَمَنُوا What does it mean? لَا تَدْقُلُوا بُيُوتَ النَّبِي حَتَّى يُؤْذَنَ لَكُمْ إِلَى طَعَامٍ غَيْرَ نَاظِرِينَ إِلَاهُ It was... They entered the Prophet's house, some of the companions, and they overstayed. Did they? They overstayed, and they stayed, and they didn't leave. And the Prophet, did he tell them leave? Was he shy? He was so shy to say to these people, please leave my house. Yeah? Are we all together, brothers? So, what did he do instead, sallallahu alayhi wa he went, came back, they're still there. They've not left. This ayah came down and Allah informed them of how to treat the Prophet's house. He said, Allah said, if you're shy, Allah is not shy to say the truth. And he told them that the Prophet ﷺ's house, do not enter it, and this and this is that cause the Prophet harm. That was the manners of the Prophet. He used to look after and I'm compiling right now, inshallah ta'ala, I'm trying to put together, which is yani, observing people's feelings. Yani, the mawaqif of the Prophet's life and the salaf, to observe people's feelings, how important it is in Islam. Another reason why, brothers and sisters, people fall into fitna is there is no consistent methodology that the person follows. There's the absence of ghiyabul manhaj al-sahih. There is no correct methodology that you're stemming from. So then you're always somewhere. Today you're there. Ooh, you're with who? He's like, yeah, I am. Uh, all these scholars are mubtadi'a, dalun, mudillun. And then the next day, he's flipped to the other side and he's like, all of them are min jannah. I take from everybody and I don't leave anyone behind. What is the problem? Whichever view he takes, there was no real methodology. He wasn't picking up from some... Yeah, and it, he's not building from a manhaj. Both situations, he's following nusus which are mutashabiha. He's following ambiguous verses. What's he following? Ambiguous verses. And so the absence of a solid foundation, you'll see a person always on a state of fitna. Are we all together, brothers? I, I'm scribbling ideas that I could think of today. So just bear with me. These are some of the things I can think of. The next one is, this is number four, right? Is hastiness and not being patient. This also causes fitna. When people can't wait for results. Like why, 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 Ustad? Why is this happening? Sheikh, why is this happening? I don't understand. But why? They want results now. And this does cause fitna. Because Allah told the Prophet Sallallahu We took that. In Surah Al-Ahqaf. Hani, be patient. Hani, be patient. So some people, it, for them, it's like, now. Now. They, results now. And it's gharib. A brother makes hijrah, leaves the lands of the non-Muslims, comes to another land, and one week he's like, I can't stay here. Why? I just can't. 
He's shaking. Why, he can't wait. It's only a week. No, Sheikh. I can't. This is not for me. Oh, I remember I traveled with a brother. We went to Egypt. And we went to a neighborhood in Egypt, which is a bit tough. Allah barik. And the water, when it comes out for the first three minutes, is it's a bit dark and uh, different colors. But that's what, what did we leave for? What was our reason? Talab al right? So he saw the water, he goes, no, 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 I can't do this. This is not for me. And Allahumma barik. I swear by Allah, and I say this with conviction, that, brain, that brother had a brain. Oh, he was, he was, every class he went to, it was, his understanding was something else. Lakin isti'jal killed him. Isti'jal. Every time he would call me, he would say, Sheikh, please, I can't do this. Look at this. He's complaining about everything. <laughs> and also, in, the, in Egypt, he went to KFC, he thought, okay, I can at least find my food. But the chicken, you can whack somebody with it. It's, so, it's like hard. So he went and he said, look at this chicken, look how hard it is. Isti'jal. Isti'jal. And of course, he's from the upper class in the UK. He lived that upper class money he did he's from a family like they had but he had brain his parents they put him in a private school in the uk that's expensive right no one goes to private schools in the uk right? we go to public school his parents so he's smart like that he's very well he, like pen and paper he's good at that but what is it that destroyed him at least he couldn't be patient he couldn't wait that this is all gonna go so my brothers and sisters if you're not patient it's a fitna for you. Because everything has to be now. Another thing that causes fitna, my brothers and sisters, is Muslims not helping each other. It's a fitna for the people. When there is no aiding and helping and supporting between the Muslims, which is the fifth reason. So some people, they say, nah, I can't be a Muslim anymore. Like, look at this. Look at how the Muslims are all abandoning me. Everyone has left me. Everyone's turned their back on me. Every, do you guys, are these re reasons real? Do you think they're valid? Allah says in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ إِلَّا تَفْعَلُوهُ تَكُنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ فِتْنَةٌ وَفَسَادٌ كَبِيرٌ تَكُنْ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَفَسَادٌ كَبِيرٌ Sorry. The hadith is, تَكُنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ فِتْنَةٌ وَفَسَادٌ عَرِيضٌ So, the Ukhuwa al-Imaniya helps brothers and sisters. Some people, they get, when they come into Islam, that first day, everyone comes up to them and says, Takbir! Allahu Akbar! Takbir! Allahu Akbar! And he feels, oh, he's part of a community. The next day, he's walking by himself. Everybody just left. True or false? And sometimes it, get, it gets bad. It gets even bad. Some people say, yeah, I think he's a spy. I think this guy is a spy. I think he's been planted in the Muslims. Everyone stay away from him. So, am I telling the truth? Yeah? Or a brother starts practicing. He takes the deen serious. He comes into the masjid. Brothers know his jahiliyyah. The brother's repented. He's ta'ibu min al -dhamb. And a person who repents from sins is like he's never done it before. But guess what the brothers in the back are doing? Yeah, do you know this guy? Jahiliyyah. He was the, the dawn on the streets. Every, killed. Uh, he's, got, he's got bodies on his name. Huh? He robbed this. The brother in the masjid can hear people whispering about him over there in that corner. I'm not making these things up. I've seen it. I was an imam of a masjid. A sister, she was on يعني, jahiliyyah and she took off her hijab. Maybe she's been in a lot of haram relationships and she fell off. Dark days she was in. Alhamdulillah, she saw the lights of Al Islam. She came into the masjid. She comes in, the sisters are talking about her. Yeah, this sister, yeah, subhanAllah, man. I wonder who's going to get married to her. Are we all together? That sister might have tattoos, which happened in the masjid. The sister came to the, me in the masjid and said, Sheikh, can I ask you a question? Huh? I had a jahiliyyah, very dark jahiliyyah. I repented. Allah. Yani, 
and I'm sincerely, and I'm remorseful of what I did in my past. Ah. I wish I can go back in life. I could er yeah, and erase everything I did. There's not a day that goes by except I cry because of what I did. Yeah, yeah. But I can't sit in the masjid for five minutes. The good looks that I get given, the things. I went, I took the microphone, I said, sister, this is... It's not hard to Allah that He flips your heart and takes you onto the streets and you go through that darkness. And then this unity and brotherhood and helping each other in khayr when it's absent is a fitna, my brothers and sisters. The sixth reason of fitna is ghiyabul muslihin. The absence of people who are sincere advisors. When they go, who tries to fill that gap? The people who fill the gap is the evil people. And the evil becomes even prevalent. It becomes يعني, more when there's no muslih, sincere muslihin who try to fix things. Are we all together? They're not there. Are we all together? Everybody has an agenda. The da'i who's meant to be a muslih, who's meant to be a caller to the deen of Allah, he's like, I'm not coming to this lecture. Until I get this hotel, until I get paid this much money, I don't take economy class. Uh, what do I do? Business. Okay, and he sends, he goes, by the way, you can't talk to me. Why? I have a, a, a receptionist. What's it called? An assistant. I have a private assistant. You can speak to my assistant, and my assistant is going to. Deal with your, your situation and that, and you're speaking to the assistant. He sends you a receipt, yeah, any receipt, receipt. In that receipt is what you have to send. By all this, has to, half of the money has to be this. Is that Muslim? Huh? No, 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 that's not Muslim. Are we all together? And Biya and the Rusul, what were they doing? Yeah, what were they doing? I don't ask you any reward for what you what I do for you guys. I will together, brothers. So the ghiyabul muslihina, the absence of muslihina, people who are sincerely concerned about the problem of the ummah, one khair for everybody, when they are absent, the people of evil become very, very apparent. And that's what the Prophet told us. He said, La ilaha illallah. The Prophet did his finger like this And he said that's how the amount that was opened From what? Ya'juj wa ma'juj Okay Zainab then she said Zainab binti Jahsh, binti Jahsh. She said Radiyallahu ta'ala anha His wife she said, Anuhlaku wafina salihun. Are we going to be destroyed amongst us, our righteous people? The Prophet he said, Naam ida kathur al khabath. Yes, if, uh, if the evil becomes a lot. So the Muslims are very little, the evil is more. Number seven, my brothers and sisters, is there's nobody. الأمر بالمعروف النهي عن المنكر. If you live at a time and an era where calling to the good and prohibiting the evil is being seen as like bad, it's a problem. And that's what we're seeing nowadays a lot. Mind your business. What's it got to do with you? Are you getting involved? صح. Um, when the brothers addressed women's issues, why are you talking about women issue? Ajeeb, where's this qa'ida from? That men cannot address women's issue. And even women can't address men's issue? Of course they can. If a woman sees a munkar from a man, she has to address this problem and warn against it. The same is if a man does. They're all together, brothers. The next thing, brothers, is al fusuqu wal ma'asi wal dhulmu. It's the eighth thing that causes a lot of fitan when the sin and the transgression and the oppression is around every corner it's just everywhere now 
الظلم الفسوق والمعاصي والظلم الله سيد وإذا أردنا أن نهلك قرية أمرنا متر فيها ففسقوا فيها فحق عليها القول فدمرناها تدميرا What's happening here? The people of evil are committing their ma'asi and their sins and guess what? It's dangerous. I just want to mention one hadith and I'm going to conclude with that inshallah ta'ala. The Prophet he said يا معشر المهاجرين خمس إذا ابتليتم بهن وأعوذ بالله أن تدركوهن Five things if you are tested with and I seek refuge in Allah that I, I reach this time the Prophet he said. So it, it kind of seems like this is going to be at the end of time which is our time. لم تظهر الفاحشة في قوم قط حتى يعلنوا بها إلا فشى فيهم الطاعون والأوجاع والأمراض التي لم تكن في أسلافهم الذين مضوا There is not a people who openly commit فاحشة زنا فاحشة هي من زنا Out openly people are saying this is my girlfriend my boyfriend Haram relationship out in the open people are not even worried the sister's telling her friends, yeah, I've got a boyfriend and this is, it's, it's fine. Everyone's talking about it. There's no, يعني, it's, it's, it's not a hidden issue. It's public news. Then guess what? Allah is going to bring to them a plague. There's going to come AIDS, HIV. Sahabas didn't know HIV and AIDS. صح? Coronavirus or all of these things, Allah brings them. Sah? Well, oja, poverty. There's going to be what? Jur, oja, hunger. Amrab, sicknesses. Alati lam takun fi aslafihi mulladina mawdo, which was not present in the previous nations. That's the first thing. So, zina is done publicly, is not private, it's become now public. Everybody's going in it. The second is وَلَمْ يَنْقُصُ الْمِكْيَالَ وَالْمِيزَانِ It reminds me of an issue where a brother, subhanAllah, he wanted to marry a sister. He wanted to what? Marry a sister. She wasn't all that practicing. And he wanted to marry her. This brother has never been in a haram relationship. So when he got married to her, she said to him, tell me about your past. He said, I haven't had a past. I mean, been practicing all my time. She said, you've never been in a haram relationship? He goes, no, I haven't. Then she clearly said to him, so you're a virgin? He said, yeah, of course. Well, of course I'm a virgin. She said, no, nah, I don't want to get married to you. You're not experienced. You don't know, so I'm not going to get married to you. Imagine that. Yeah, brothers that you have to be that disturbed to say that statement. We'll tell the brothers. So when you're living at a time like that, you ask yourself, which one is it better to live on the earth or underneath the earth? Yeah? Yeah. Some situations, it's better to live underneath the earth because we do live under the earth, right? Hayatul barzakh. Some things is better to live under the earth than on top of the earth because adab of Allah is going to come. And when it comes, وَاتَّقُوا فِتْنَةً لَا تُصِيبَنَّ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْكُمْ خاصة. It's not going to be restricted to those evil doers. The second thing is the Prophet said, look what he said. وَلَمْ يَنْقُصُ الْمِكْيَالَ وَالْمِيزَانَ You do not become unjust in the scaling and the way you scale things. يعني buying and the selling. You go to the market, the guy is selling you broken things. Lying and he's saying to you, Wallahi, this is made in Australia. Kadab is made in China. So, Zubair, why are you laughing? Is that what you do? Yeah? I'd rather not say. And we all together, Walam Yankusul Mikala, Wal Mizana. You're buying, you go to a market, the guy's buying it. Guess what? When they do that and they start playing around, Illa Ukhidu Bissinina. What Allah Taala does is He brings droughts. Rain doesn't come out. 
Is that all? Wajawru Sultan, oppressive leaders. Leaders. Qulubuhum qulubu the ab, whose hearts are the hearts of wolves, wolves. Bahal doesn't care, has no mustard seed of mercy in him, just ripping into his society, nuking them when they don't listen to him, puts them in prison and forgets them in those prisons. That's what comes. Jawl Sultan. And look at that. And they do not refuse to pay the zakat. Except Allah stops the rain from the sky. We all together. إِلَّا مُنِعُ الْقَطْرَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ And guess what? وَلَوْلَ الْبَهَائِمُ لَمْ يُمْطَرُوا And even the little rain that you see coming down is only for the animals, not for you guys. But the animals didn't do anything wrong. So Allah sends a little rain for them. This little rain is for them. وَلَمْ يَنْقُصُوا أَهْدَ اللَّهِ وَلَمْ يَنْقُضُوا أَهْدَ اللَّهِ They do not break the covenant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَأَهْدَ رَسُولِهِ And the covenant of his messenger إِلَّا صَلَّطَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ عَدُوًا Except they do not break the covenant of Allah Tawheed Following the sunnah Being obedient to Allah They don't break all of those covenants Okay Also the covenants that they make with others They break all the uhud and the mawathiq When they break that Except what does Allah do He sends to them عَدُوًا مِنْ غَيْرِهِمْ Enemies from outside will come فَأَخَذُوا بَعْضَ مَا فِي أَيْدِيمْ And the enemy will take what's in their hands وَمَا لَمْ تَحْكُمْ أَئِمَّتُهُمْ And when their rulers do not judge by بِكِتَابِ اللَّهِ The Book of Allah And they bring man-made laws from France and England and other places and they use that as their main dastur The constitution of the country is based on a man-made law When they do that إِلَّا جَعَلَ اللَّهُ بَأْسَهُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ Except Allah makes the people and the ruler consistently fighting. He can't sit on that chair properly. As soon as he sits, fights, wars, two tribes are fighting, he has to stop the fight. The people are uprising against him, protest, this and that. Why is that happening to him? Because he refuses to judge by the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, all of this is what? What our hands have done put forward. Um, there are more asbab, more reasons, um, but I will leave it there inshallah ta'ala I've said enough Those are the advices I want to share with all of you I hope that was of benefit For all of you And anything I've said uh, While I was here While I was speaking Anything I've said that was wrong Is from me as shaytan and Allah and his messenger Are both free from it Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik Ashadu wa la ilaha illa ant Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayki